I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. Now, you remember after I was healed of those sugar swings and all that panic attacks, that the spirit of fear kept trying to bother me. And I've told you this, this before, you know, that God uh, told me in my office one day, He says, Listen, Gary, you're going to have to rebuke this thing. You're going to have to deal with this. You need, to, you need to tell this thing to back up and back off in the name of Jesus. And so that, remember, that's what I did. You've heard my story. I went into the restroom at my office complex, and I, I just had a little discussion with it. Not God, with it. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, you foul spirit of infirmity, you spirit of fear. This is not legal. I take my authority over you, and I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus. And God said, pay no attention to your emotions. This is a legal issue. I felt sick. I mean, the fear was still, I felt those tormenting thoughts start to, you know, didn't leave right then. I went in my office, sat down for about 20 minutes in my office chair, and all of a sudden the anointing came on me. And I told you before, you've heard, I saw that demon leave, that black thing right through the ceiling, and I was free. And I was excited. And I tell people all the time, that's when I called Drenda and said, let's get us some Chinese food. I am free. <laughs> Everyone reads my books, you know. When I, they read my books, I go preach at churches. They always serve me Chinese food. We read your books, Pastor. We know you like to celebrate with Chinese food. I said, yes, sir. But you know what God did show me? I had to rebuke that thing. I had to speak to it. I had to speak to it. God could not do that. I had to speak to that thing. I had to learn how this thing operated. I had to learn who I was in Christ. I had to learn the authority that he gave me. I had to deal with it. Anyway, I was facing some issues, and in 2010 Provision Conference, this happened. Most of you have seen this, but God wanted to remind me of something. I think you need to be reminded of it as well. In my Bible, in a very difficult day, I had a dream one night. I wrote the dream in the front of my Bible because this is what the dream was. I was standing on a hill with a sword in my hand. Below me was an entire army with their swords raised at me. And the, the word of the Lord, a voice in my dream says this, don't underestimate yourself, Gary. And in that dream, I took my sword and I began to scream the word Thor, T-H-O-R, Thor! And I began to run down the hillside towards this army by myself with my sword extended. And I thought, I, I, we have some people in the church that understand languages. I said, what is, the, what is that all about? What is the word Thor? And he said, it's a son of thunder. It's about thunder. Don't underestimate yourself. When the enemy sees you coming, Gary, it sounds like thunder. I wrote that. <laughs> is that really thunder? Or is that you guys? <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, that was so special, you know. And that was the only thunderclap that was that we heard that was there. We went outside. There's one cloud above the church. Uh, it wasn't even raining. And uh, so right on cue, man. I mean, that was God. He was just saying, amen. You have the authority. Go deal with it, right? That was so cool. But you say, well, how do I sound like thunder? Matthew chapter 8, talked about the centurion. Remember him, the centurion? He had a sick servant. And he told Jesus, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. Oh, so what's he saying? He's saying, look, when I talk to one of my guys under my authority, 
my voice doesn't sound like my voice. My voice sounds like, can you guess? Caesar's voice. And when I hear my commanding officer speak to me, I don't hear his voice. I hear Caesar's voice. So when you speak on behalf of the Lord, you speak his word, guess what you sound like? You sound like Jesus. Same authority, same twang, same everything. The devil can't tell it's you. In fact, the Bible says, submit to God, resist him, and he'll flee in terror. That word terror in the Greek means run in terror. It means submit him and he'll flee, run in terror. Because it sounds like it's the same authority of God himself when you speak. So listen, I've said this many times, stop begging and stop wishing Jesus would come and tell you how to deal with things. You don't, listen, you already have everything. But if Jesus would just show up in my bedroom, he'd tell me what to do. He put the spirit of God in you, friend, to be your counselor. That's what the book of John says. He already gave you his authority, his spirit, his word, the entire kingdom, you already have it all. You already have it all. But most people do not know how to dot the I and cross the T. They don't know how to bring it to a close, how to bring it in the earth realm. Listen, demons don't care how big God is in your, your life. They don't care that you come to church. They do care if you learn who you are in Christ, learn the authority that Jesus gave you, and you actually go out and advance into this territory. Listen, the Bible teaches us, you're like Joseph. Remember Joseph in the Old Testament? In prison, accused of raping Potiphar's wife. That is a lifetime, you don't get out sentence. A Hebrew in an Egyptian prison, it's over. Of course, Pharaoh has a dream, remember, and then Joseph interprets it. In Genesis 41, 39, it says, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and as wise as you. I bet you could take this whole thing and just preach it. It's like, since God has made all this known, what's the Holy Spirit supposed to do? In 1 Corinthians second chapter, things you've not thought, seen, or heard, the Holy Spirit's going to reveal to you. Come on now, help me out. There is no one so discerning and as wise as you. Hey, that's us. We're ready for promotion here. Right? You shall be in charge of my palace. This is Pharaoh talking to Joseph. All my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne, I'll be greater than you. Now, Joseph is a type of Christ. He's the deliverer. He's a type of Christ. And so as we talk about what happened to Joseph, let me ask you this. Where are you seated at spiritually? Ephesians 2nd chapter. Come on, help me out. Where are you seated at? On the right hand of the Father with Jesus. So only Father is above you. You have all the same authority Jesus has. And so this is a picture. This whole story is a picture of what the church actually has. Let's go on. Speaking of the palace, all my people. Pharaoh says, all my people. Well, God told us in Hebrews that uh, chapter 114, all angels, all angels, all angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. All God's people, all his people. This is a, this is a picture of where you're at. All God's people, his angels are now to back you up. Let's go on. This, gets, this is great. Verse 41. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Jesus says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Are you getting this? This is your territory. You have jurisdiction here. God gave you the jurisdiction, the authority to rule this place. I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh, this is this, took his signet ring. Now the signet ring, when the king made a decree, he stamped it with his ring. It represented his authority, made it law. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. 
What does that mean? Joseph, you're in charge. You have my authority. What you say goes. Are you getting this? This is about you. This is prophetically speaking about you, the church. He was dressed in a robe of fine linen, gold chain, the prosperity of the kingdom. Around his neck, he had him riding a chariot. He had access to the entire kingdom of Egypt as his second in command. And the people shouted before him, make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or foot in all Egypt. Unless you speak, Joseph, nothing will be done. This is prophetic to you. This is a picture of the church. You have his authority. You you say, oh, I wish that was was my story. Man, and you know, I feel like I'm in prison right now, Pastor. You know, I wish I had someone deliver me out of this thing and I had all the wealth of whatever and I had, you know. You, You do. You have been. In fact, you're listed in the New Testament. In Luke chapter 15, we find the exact same story. The parable of the lost son. When the son comes home, the father says to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, the linens, the finest linens. He's royal, you're royalty now, right? Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, the signet ring. You have the authority of the estate of the king. Put sandals on his feet, same implication. Same meaning the same thing as a chariot, you now have access to cover the entire territory. And the fatted calf is the same thing as the gold around his neck, the necklace of gold. You have the prosperity of the entire estate. Are you getting this? This is you. This is you. Can can you imagine having to beg if you were Joseph for a meal? Of course not. I mean, he's in charge. He has the signet ring. What he says goes. You have the authority. 